fair warning ahead of the fact, guys, this is going to be my spoiler review for Spider-Man Homecoming. If you have not yet seen Spider-Man Homecoming, go and watch it now and save this video for later. Or, alternatively, if you just hate yourself and want to ruin your viewing experience of a film, carry on watching and find out all of the spoilers and easter eggs that I will be discussing in this video. So there were a lot of things that I couldn't really go into too much detail about in my spoiler-free review because I feel like it would have given away some of the bigger plot points of the film or some of the points that I got the most enjoyment out of seeing but not knowing about. So a few of those I'm going to rattle through and then there's also some easter eggs that I want to get through as well and we'll rattle through those. But to start with, one of the big reveals of the film is the moment that you find out that Adrian Toomes, who is Michael Keaton's character, who is the Vulture, is Liz Allen's dad in this film. And Liz Allen is the girl that Peter Parker is having a real tough time trying to impress, trying to get her to like him, and he eventually gets up the confidence to ask her to the homecoming, and that's a really big deal for him. It's a real turning point in his confidence. And then he turns up to the house and... Michael Keaton opens the door and there's a split second where you think, does he know who he is? Does he have the whole family held captive? And he invites him in and you think it's sinister for a second. So he now has a choice over whether to carry on and be Liz Allen's date or make the choice to go and stop Vulture instead what are you going to do at that point? And it gives Michael Keaton this great acting moment where he slowly starts figuring out from all of the information that he gets from Liz and from Peter that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. He's this kid that's been getting in his way the whole time. And he says to him, I'm going to give you this choice. You can stay out of my way and you won't get hurt and I promise you that I won't do anything to you. Just leave this alone and don't think anything of it. But if you get in my way, people are gonna get hurt. He really shone through in that moment. Another thing that I really liked about this film is how meta it is in its humour. There's a moment in this film where you feel like what's going on on the screen is a film reference. And it's like, this feels a lot like Ferris Bueller's Day Off at this point, where he's running through all of the gardens. And right as you think, this feels like a film reference. The film references that film in the background while someone is watching Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And it's such a meta film reference, but it's great. It's great to know that this Spider-Man is tonally the kind of Spider-Man that can get away with making these really intricate film references. So the Easter eggs that are in this film, I'm going to rattle through a lot of them because there were quite a few character references in this film. First of all, Liz Allen is in this film as Peter Parker's main kind of crush for the film and she was actually the first love interest that Peter Parker had in the comics, first being introduced in Spider-Man number four. So it's great that they use someone that hasn't really been a love interest for Peter Parker before as the main one in this one. And I like that because Liz Allen goes away at the end of this film and moves to a different state, that in a way it reflects what Spider-Man is all about because Spider-Man doesn't always get the girl. And I feel like in the past iterations of Spider-Man, it's been very much about Spider-Man trying to get the girl and is then successful. So another thing that we see referenced is Matt Gargan, who is then going to eventually become the Scorpion. And I feel like all of the tech that Vulture had in this film will then get turned around and used to create Scorpion. Um, possibly some other villains in the future as well maybe creating some semblance of the Sinister Six. We definitely see Shocker in this film, or at least, you know, two iterations of Shocker. They are setting some sort of semblance of a group of supervillains up. Another thing that I liked is that there is not a Goblin reference in sight, because I feel like the Green Goblin has been a little bit overdone as Spider-Man's arch nemesis by this point. So I liked that they didn't go down the route of hinting at something like that in the future just yet. They do sneak in a pretty sneaky MJ reference, which I was under the understanding that they weren't going to, and it feels a little bit like an afterthought that Zendaya 
playing her character of Michelle Jones, then says, my friends call me MJ. Whether that will just stay as it is for now until an actual Mary Jane Watson comes along, I'd like it if they kind of stayed as just Michelle and his friend Ned. So those are two characters that don't really have to have ties to other characters in the universe. Danny Glover is also in this film. A lot of people thought that he would be tied to Miles Morales in this film, or actually being Miles Morales as a character. Instead, he plays a character called Aaron Davies, who is a small-time criminal looking to up his tech game. And in that sense, that is kind of a reference to Miles Morales, because Aaron Davies in the comics is the uncle of Miles Morales, and that's even referenced in the sense that he says he has a nephew who's in New York. Now, whether that's just a nod to the character, or it's something set up to be bigger later on in the franchise, is yet to be seen. It doesn't have to be something bigger, it can just be a reference to the fact that they've acknowledged that this exists. There is also, of course, the typical Stan Lee cameo, which I enjoyed seeing, because Spider-Man is really his brainchild, and he's most well known for Spider-Man, so of course he's going to make an appearance in this, but it's nice to see him in it. And lastly, if there is one thing that this film has taught me, it's patience. Particularly because at the end of the credits, there is a post credit scene involving Captain America doing his public service announcements like he does throughout the film, and he goes on a little announcement teaching kids about the value of patience, and how sometimes you can have a lot of patience waiting for something, and ultimately, it doesn't really pay off because it's not what you expected it to be. And that felt like the biggest rickroll of all time in a Marvel Cinematic Universe film. And that's pretty much it for my spoiler review of Spider-Man Homecoming. So now that you know some of the Easter eggs and some of the spoilers to the film, what other ones did you pick out from the film that I might have missed? What was your favourite reference in Spider-Man Homecoming? All comments welcome in the comments below. Let's talk nerdy. Let's talk spoiler nerdy. As always, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here and you want to see more in the future, don't forget to hit subscribe. You can view some of my other videos right here. And until that point, I will web swing you next time.